Look, the Ertl Thomas line is one that for many reasons is beyond iconic, considered one of, if not the best, by many fans. But with that being said, you may not have ever heard of it or seen them around in stores since they've been discontinued for a very long time, and kinda overall now exist in a collectible state. So Ertl would produce Thomas & Friends toys between 1985 and 2004, and the most notable was their die-cast range at roughly 1 64th scale. Keep in mind the scaling is not accurate at all and does not carry to all characters. Releasing first in the UK in 1985, the first of these products were die-cast engines with sticker faces. At first there was only Thomas and a larger variant that had a uh, molded face and was a pullback. But a year later, the smaller Thomas was joined by James and Henry. In 1987, the models would be upgraded and Percy was released alongside Annie and Clarabelle. Then in 1988 came Toby and Birdie. Gordon and Edward in 1989, and finally they got rid of the sticker faces in 1990, as these would degrade over time and swapped them with actual molds. On a yearly basis, there were new engines, wagons, playsets, plenty for the diecast range. And truth be told, they really weren't afraid to dig deep. Engines that didn't even show up in the show, but were instead Railway Series exclusive, even got models made, like Coldy. It became so popular that there were several sub-ranges as well, from keychains to miniatures, and again, larger pullback engines. Hell, they even had a line of Tugs toys, just like they did with Thomas, just sadly not as big or long-lived. But Ertl's supreme reign on the Thomas toy market couldn't last forever, and this came to a halt starting outside of the UK in 2001. Now, they would continue in the UK for about three years until 2004, but when Learning Curve was doing their best to start pushing take-along and other types of toys, this would create a bit of a competitive market, and thus Ertl was cancelled that same year. A true shame too, because I really don't think any range quite cared like Ertl did. And this isn't just evident in the final toys, but the prototypes and samples too. And you know what, with all this being said, you may be wondering, why are we even talking about all this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see here, I have a, a couple for us to talk about today. Three in particular, and I do have a couple more, like I have a Thomas, a Donald and Douglas, some tankers and stuff, but sadly those are in storage, so today I just have the ones that uh, sit on the desk and that are, you know, a little bit more meaningful to me. Or really, I should say, you know, are uh, in the better conditions and even around to talk about, you know, present, so eh, yeah, we're going to talk about what we can. Let's just jump into it. I think it's only fair we start with the one that actually has a package. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Ertl Toby in the Shining Time Station packaging. And as you can see here, I'm not going to lie. This is some of the best f***ing packaging I think we ever got ever in terms of anything. Like, look at that. You've got a lot of beautiful illustrations going on here. You've got a track that leads into, you know, the background. Looks like a little train there on the viaduct, a little village, little people. It's just beautiful. Even the Shining Time logo with the little blue bird and yellow butterfly. And then at the bottom, you've got this little steam cloud that says Toby the Tram Engine. And there he is. You can see him basically the full way around. And this is opened like so. I did this with an Exacto years ago. We've got some beautiful pink plants here at the bottom, a Thomas and Friends logo. And when you flip it over, you also get a character card. You can uh, cut these out if you want. As you can see here, there's Toby's, and it gives a little bit of a description of the character. Though a bit old-fashioned, Toby is always happy to help out and feel useful to the more modern engines. And there you go. You can hang it up on the wall, frame them, just keep it with the toy. Yeah, there's really not a lot to it, but again, it's so simple and beautiful. It's a, it's a favorite of mine. And you know what? I did forget I also have this set right here, which we did a video on a long time ago. Also, you know, Shining Time Station packaging. But enough of all that. Let's take a look at the actual toy here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Ertl Toby. And I can't lie, this one's probably a favorite of mine. It's just, uh, it's one of the ones I had when I was a kid, which is why, you know, there's that sentimental value. But it's also just so well made. Look at it. It's got some pretty damn good wood molding here on the side. The face looks phenomenal. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I had to burp there for a second. Now, something I'm not a huge fan of is the uh, buffers. As you can see here, it's very reflective. And that's because they're stickers. They are, uh, not the most, you know, sturdy. You know, when I'd play with them, they'd often come off as a kid. But thankfully, Toby's have held up pretty damn good over time. He's got good detailing here on the lamps. Pretty good number seven there. And here's a look at the chassis or the uh, six wheels he's got there at the bottom. Now, typically, these are held together very simply. As you can see here with Toby, there's just two little screws there. And the wheels sit on this little, uh, if you can see there, it's a separate piece. Or the uh, tram plate here is where the wheels fall into 
Body plate goes on top of that. Boom. And then you've got a functioning roll along little engine. And let's just be honest, when it comes to just nostalgia and a good looking little toy, it's hard to beat Toby. He's got everything that you would expect. He's got that perfect shape. Not too bad detailing here on the top. We've got a little bell, nice little funnel, and uh, yeah, that part's literally just a black stick that goes down the side. But I mean, it, it is what it is. Now, another thing I'm not too huge on with these things is the coupling system. As you can see there, it's very thin plastic. And typically you would just have, you know, another one of these with a peg that sticks up and it would sit on the top like so they would snap off very, very easily. And I'm not sure how many I have that are even still, you know, in good shape. I guess we have to get that out of storage one day and all check together. Or maybe I'll make a video out of it. But yeah, there were a couple things about the Ertl brand that I didn't love all around. I wouldn't say that's really reflected with Toby. He's just a beautiful little engine. I, I mean, the coupling system does suck, so does the, bu you know, sticker buffers, but still, it's a damn good toy. And truth be told, I've seen so much done with this toy here alone. Like, people will take Tinshoto spuds or uh, very small chassis and slip them in there. Boom, you've got a 00 scale Toby. And it looks pretty damn good and is a pretty decent scale. We got a little bit of bubbling here on the top of the roof or uh, side of the roof. And that is something that's pretty common on these as well. You know, just with time and moisture getting to them. But, yep, yeah, altogether I'd say Toby's probably one of the best they ever did. But let's be honest, Toby's not a hard character to nail. And let's see, here on the bottom, it says Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Britt Allcroft, Thomas Limited, 1988. So, yeah, it's an old one. Uh, I don't think it's actually from 88, but, you know, all I know is I had it as a kid and got it at a Day Out with Thomas event. So, yep, again, this one's got some sentimental value. But moving on from Toby, let's talk about my other, or one of my other favorite characters here, Percy the Small Green Engine. Now, Percy I got much later on in life, or uh, honestly more recently. I think it was for my uh, 18th birthday in a, uh, I think it came with a DVD, or maybe it was a VHS. Somebody found it at a thrift shop, and I got an Ertl Percy. And you know what? Ever since, I've kind of adored this guy. I mean, he's kind of cursed. Look at his face. You know, I've, I've definitely seen better. But overall, it's a solid little toy. I mean, it's got damn good molding to it. Proportions are definitely there. I mean, I'm sure you could change this face out with like, say, a capsule face and boom, that quick, you'd have a very, very accurate Percy. And it's got very nice gold dome, some little whistles there and safety valves that are also painted. An open cab, which I also forgot to mention with uh, Toby there. He's got that on uh, both sides, just not in the middle. And uh, sadly, just painted on windows on the front and back. But again, there is a cab if you wanted to put a figure in there or for some reason wanted access to it. Now, the pistons and step ladders are inaccurately molded in red, but that's because it's a single piece here on uh, the running board itself, and they're just a part of that. And also, as you can see here, the side rods aren't really side rods as much as they're, you know, pieces of plastic that are attached to the uh, chassis block, and the wheels kind of sit behind them. But truth be told, it does look convincing, especially on Percy, since it goes under that piston and, you know... They don't have to move. At least it's a detail that's there, I guess. Let's be real. These are just very simple push-along die-cast toys, and that's really all I care for. It's a very accurate, nice-looking, and durable toy, too. As you can see here, he's got a couple paint scratches or uh, bumps on him just from time or, you know, maybe falling off my desk, but still, he's held up damn well. I think that just gives him a little bit of character. I think, you know, the only real criticism there is for this thing is the face, and sadly, you know, again stickers on the buffers, but that just is an Ertl thing, you know, get used to it. Now, one of my favorite Ertls is one that's a little bit more rare. It's sadly in a pretty shitty condition, but I did get it from my friend Nick as a present not too long ago. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is this. We have an Ertl Paper Face James. This is not only the oldest Ertl I own, but it's the only Paper Face. And this is, you know, a feature you heard me talk about earlier, and I can't lie, I, I fucking adore it. This is, it's just nice. I just, I just really like it. I can't lie. Now, the face on this, James, is the smiling one. And as you can see here, or, uh, I want to say it feels, I don't know if it is, but it definitely feels Railway Series inspired, you know? It just looks like something you'd see on the front of a James book. In fact, I'm going to go get my James book. Like, look at that. Like, look at that. It's kind of uncanny. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just feels Railway Series inspired. And sadly, he does, again, have some pretty serious paint chipping going on here. Uh, he's missing his buffers entirely on the front, but still, I'm just so excited to have this thing, have such an old James model. And the sticker face is in solid condition. We've got a little bit of a 
scuff there, but that's really nothing too bad. It looks beautiful. And kind of like the capsules, but maybe even a little bit better with Ertl. The uh, tender is molded to the actual engine. It is not two separate pieces, but you do get a full tender. Look at that, full six wheels. It's actually sizable. When you compare that to the capsule, that's, you know, just like that big, and then you got the engine. It's, I don't know. It's a little bit more neat when you actually get the full tender, I'd say. And right behind that, you can see we also, again, have a somewhat open cab. It's not really as much since, as you can see there, it does kind of go into the chassis block. But again, it's still pretty solid. We've got side rods here as well, though this time they're molded in black instead of silver. It's just a beautiful little toy. I can't lie. I really enjoy this thing. Now, unlike Percy, the front windows here are stickers instead of actually uh, printed or anything like that. But the five and lining and all the other stuff that is printed. And again, this is just a very, very neat model. I don't know why I like the side rods in black so much, but it's neat. It's unique. I like looking at it. I love the just attention to detail they put into the face. And I've been back and forth with maybe touching this thing up one day and trying to put new red paint on it, but no. I just, no, this is a collectible item. What is this? What's the date on this one? Let's see, 1984, Brit Allcroft or Kane Ward Limited, 1984, Brit Allcroft, 1984. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever really touch this thing up. It just is what it is. Somebody before me loved this thing and played with it heavily. So what? You know, that's what these things were meant to be. Now they're collectible items, but back in the day, these were literally just take-alongs or uh, what was before take-along and arguably maybe even a little bit better. But to be fair, at least Take Along had uh, the tender you could detach. So I will, you know, we're not getting into that argument right now, but I will say that I gotta give some credit where credit's due. And altogether, James probably isn't the most detailed either. As you can see here, there's no whistle or safety valve detail. And the uh, gold paint has pretty much faded completely from the dome, but it's still a favorite of mine. I love that face. I love the fact that he has six wheels on the uh, tender and a accurate configuration on the actual locomotive. I think it'd be cool maybe one day to get a newer Ertl James and try to separate it into, you know, two separate units where there's a tender and a locomotive. Maybe even go Leo Kim video style and convert it into an HO scale runner, but not with this one. Again, this one is a collectible and honestly, one of my favorite ones that I have in the collection altogether. And ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, non-pinary pals, I guess with all that being said, this has been the uh, little Ertl review, or the review of the Ertls I had on hand on the desk to talk about. Since this is a brand I really haven't talked about in the past, and I feel like that's not really fair. I mean, I've talked about Trackmaster, Tomy, Take Along, everything, and Ertl's one of the best, if not, again, the best. And, you know, if there's ever something you want to get into collecting, or say you want a really specific Thomas character, if there's any line or brand that probably made it, I'm talking Jock, Again, Coldy, Godred, Ertl had you. Just if you wanted the base characters like Percy, James, Toby, you'd still get a solid little product. And you know, I just wish they lasted a little bit longer, but you know what? At least we got what we got and I don't know. I guess anything's better than what we have today. But with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to let me know in the comments who your favorite Ertl is or uh, who your favorite of today is if you have an Ertl collection and if you'd like to see more. Huge shout out to my patrons for making videos and projects like this possible. Again, if you'd like to see more, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to uh, maybe go and get those other Ertls out of storage or hell, maybe even get my hands on some new ones to talk about altogether. But again, with all that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of off the rails, but uh, maybe a little hopefully in-depth look at some of my favorite Ertl toys and favorite Thomas and Friends brands that ever existed. What the hell kind of scaling is this? Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.